You'll remember from Volume 1 that Vladek Spiegelman and his second wife, Marla, were on the rocks. Art often got caught up in their arguments when he went to visit his father to record his story. Well, Marla has finally left Vladek and gone to live in Florida. Oh no, this has also ended Art and Francois' vacation early. They need to go and comfort Vladek in the Catskills. Art feels sorry for his father, but he also can't stand him. Now, let's get back to what happened to Vladek and his beloved first wife, Anya, when they arrived at Auschwitz, a place they would have to face without each other. Vladek wasn't all by himself, though. He was still with his friend Mandelbaum. Right away, the Nazis took Vladek's ID papers, clothes, and shaved his head. Then they tattooed his prisoner number on his arm. Vladek wasn't going to be sent to the gas chambers and ovens just yet. The Nazis needed him to work. But all over Auschwitz, there was a toxic smell. It smelt like burning rubber, but it was burning flesh. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out, and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks, and back to the video. Mandelbaum's nephew, Abraham, was also there. Wait, wasn't he supposed to be hiding in Hungary? After all, his letter was the reason Anya and Vladek left Shopianitsa and got on that fateful train. They thought it would take them to Hungary. That's how they were captured by the Nazis. It turned out that Abraham's letter was written by those dodgy people smugglers. They'd sold out Abraham as well. It came back to bite them, though. The people smugglers also ended up in Auschwitz. In Auschwitz, the prisoners were packed in like sardines. Abraham and Mandelbaum even had to share a bed. Life got even harder when their supervisor turned out to be a total bully. Every day, he forced the prisoners to do exercises until they were totally exhausted. The supervisor was a Polish prisoner and needed someone to teach him English. Luckily, Vladek was a perfect match for the job as he spoke fluent English and Polish. He even got special treatment. The supervisor gave him lots of food, new clothes, and protected him from being taken away by the Nazis. He even hid Vladek in his room for two whole months. But he couldn't do this forever. Vladek needed another way to avoid being taken to his death, just like Mandelbaum had been. Vladek knew skilled workers got better treatment, so that's what he would do. But let's check back in with Art. Time flies. It's now 1987, and Art is famous for his work. The first volume of Mouse was published in 1986 and was a big success. Sadly, Vladek didn't live to see it. He died in 1982 from heart failure. He's now buried next to Anya, who took her own life in 1968. Art is feeling very depressed and struggling to function. He regularly visits his psychologist, Pavel, to talk things through. Art is still trying to come to terms with the many issues he had with his dad. Vladek Spiegelman was a difficult man sometimes, but Art feels guilty about exposing his father's private life to the world. Art also finds it hard to imagine what his parents really went through. Not only is Pavel a great listener but he's also a Holocaust survivor, like Vladek. Pavel's advice helps Art deal with his mixed feelings and move forward with his work. Back in Auschwitz, it's 1944, and Vladek has become a tinman. His boss, Yidl, wasn't too keen on him, though. Yidl was a communist and had heard that Vladek used to own factories. To Yidl, Vladek was a greedy capitalist. Whatever Vladek was doing, he was always thinking of Anya. She was in Birkenau, a camp just two miles away. He desperately wanted to let Anya know he was okay. But how? Luckily, 
Vladek knew a kind Hungarian woman named Manchi. She sometimes worked at Birkenau and was willing to be their messenger. Eventually, in the summer of 1944, Vladek caught up with Anya in Birkenau. But their time together was brief. A guard caught them talking and nearly beat Vladek to death. What was even worse, though, were the selections. Vladek had to stand there naked, whilst a doctor decided if he was fit enough to keep on working. If he failed this test, he would be sent to the gas. Fortunately, Vladek passed and started to work as a cobbler. He was so good at this that his Nazi customers rewarded him with food. Out of the blue, Vladek noticed that new barracks were being built for female workers from Birkenau in Auschwitz. He had to get Anya in there. It cost a fortune in bribes, but by October 1944, Vladek had saved up enough to make it happen. So Anya ended up in Auschwitz, but a fence still divided them. Vladek threw packages of food over it to Anya. Unfortunately, a supervisor saw this and went looking for Anya to punish her. When she couldn't find Anya, the supervisor forced all the women to do exercises until they could no longer move. By this time, the Russians were beginning to overpower the Germans in the war. The Nazis ordered Vladek and the other tin men to dismantle the gas chambers. They wanted to take the parts back to Germany and keep on killing prisoners. This didn't stop them in the meantime. By May 1944, the Nazis were killing so many prisoners that they put them in mass graves, dead or alive. Boom, boom, the Russians were getting closer. So the Nazis marched everyone out of Auschwitz. Any stragglers were shot. As the Nazis were losing the war, some prisoners thought they could bribe their way to freedom and escape. This didn't work. The Nazis took their bribes and still shot them. Vladek and the remaining prisoners marched until they reached Grossrosen in Germany. The next morning, they were put on a cattle train to Dachau. The prisoners were crammed in so tightly it was hard to breathe. Suddenly, the train stopped. And it didn't move for days. The Nazis were starving them to death. Luckily, Vladek had a blanket and made a hammock. This saved his life. He could reach out the window and grab snow to eat. Of course, many didn't make it. At Dachau, Vladek made a new friend. He was a Frenchman and couldn't speak German or Polish. Vladek was the only person who could understand him, as they both spoke English. They met up every day and, since the Frenchman wasn't a Jew, he received food parcels from his family. He generously shared these with Vladek, which saved his life. A few weeks later, Vladek got typhus from all the lice everywhere. Nobody was safe, and the bodies just kept piling up. The Nazis then sent Vladek and other sick prisoners on a train to the Swiss border. They were part of a prisoner exchange. Freedom was close. But it's time for us to catch up with Art again. It's 1979, and Art and Francoise are staying with Vladek in the Catskills. On their way back from grocery shopping, Francoise wants to give a hitchhiker a lift. Vladek isn't keen on this and thinks that because the hitchhiker is black, he will steal from them. Francoise calls out Vladek's racism, and it leads to an argument. Vladek is stubborn in his views, and Art, as usual, must be the peacemaker. Vladek's health continues to worsen, and by the time he returns home to Rego Park, he's very sick. Art records his father's story in between doing odd jobs to help him out. Back in 1945, it took a while for Vladek to be free of the Nazis. The train to the Swiss border didn't go all the way there, and the sick prisoners had to finish the journey on foot. But this was interrupted by very important news. The war was over. The Nazis put the prisoners on another train and sent them to the next town. 
but word hadn't spread fast enough amongst the Germans there. Almost immediately, a Wehrmacht patrol rounded them all up. Here, Vladek came across an old friend, Shivek, from Bedjen. In the morning, they noticed something very strange. The Nazis were gone. Were they finally free? Nope. Another Nazi patrol found them and some other prisoners. Talk about deja vu. Then, in the morning, these soldiers disappeared too. Even the villagers were fleeing. Vladek and Shivek decided to hide somewhere and wait. They found a great spot too, an empty house. There was even food and clothing left behind. Soon enough, the Americans arrived and allowed Vladek and Shivek to stay there for a while. They were safe at last. Back in America, Vladek and Marla are back together in Florida. It seems Marla still has a soft spot for Vladek. Vladek went to Florida, but then got sick and had to go to hospital. So the doctors phoned Marla. She felt sorry for him and decided to stay and help him. Now, a stubborn Vladek has left the hospital against the doctor's advice. He prefers to go to a hospital in New York, in case anything serious happens. Going to the airport brings back memories for Vladek. At the end of the war, he and Anya left Poland for Sweden on a small plane. He always wanted to go to America, where his uncle Herman lived, but that wasn't possible right away. In Sweden, Vladek went back to what he knew best, selling things. He became a salesperson at a Jewish-owned department store and never had it so good. A few years later, the time had come. The Spiegelmans were off to America. Back in New York, the doctor says Vladek is all right. He can even go home. Now, let's get back to how the war ended for Vladek and Shivek. There were many refugees like them, so the Americans set up displaced person camps. They both went to one in Garmisch Partenkirchen. But these camps were nothing like the concentration camps. Of course, all they really wanted was to be with their loved ones. Soon enough, they headed north to Shivek's brother in Hanover. But their travel plans got off to a rocky start. Germany barely had any cities left, let alone train tracks. After a long journey, they arrived in Hanover. Vladek was desperate to see Anya. In the Polish city of Sosnowitz, Anya was also desperate to get news about Vladek. She even went to see a fortune teller. The woman saw a vision of a dead child, which Anya interpreted as Richu, their firstborn son. However, she also told Anya that Vladek was still alive. Finally, she received a letter from Vladek. He even sent a picture as proof. Soon enough, Vladek made it to Sosnovitz. At long last, they were together again. They were the happiest couple alive. What an incredible story. Vladek Spiegelman certainly had a lot of luck on his side, but his tale also shows us the power of love, hope, and determination. Which aspect of his story inspires you the most? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.